Hey, what's up? Um, so today we're going to be talking a little bit about chapters 2 and chapter 3. Um, those were the chapters that I read uh, this week. And what we're going to be discussing is a little bit on uh, immigration and ethnic identity, discrimination, social classes, and um, the different educational opportunities that different people have, and what we should do as teachers to provide the best uh, educational experience for kids, um, no matter where or what they're born into. All right, so before we start with all that, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my life um, in Baltimore and what it was like growing up and me coming to college and how that may differ um, from some of you guys in class. So life for me in Maryland was a little bit uh, a little bit different. It was a little bit difficult. I mean, my older white family were immigrants from Poland. Now, they didn't have much money coming in, and every generation has wanted better, but we haven't been able to get that far. It's the same for my black family. Now, when my mom and my dad had me, they both wanted uh, to give me the best experience that they possibly could. My dad moved away from me when I was one. Um, but me and my mom continued to try to find better for ourselves. And we moved 14 times. The majority of my life, though, I grew up in Baltimore. And um, we weren't able, though, to get that far. I mean, me and my mom remained poor. And so the educational opportunities that I had uh, were very low. And the things that I stressed about were not necessarily... Um, my education. And so when I came to college, I was way behind where other people were. And that was because of the whole entire process of not having that much money, um, the family not having that much money, not having a great education, be put in places that, you know, education isn't your main focus. And so all those factors kind of weighed in on how far behind I was. But luckily, you know, I had some good uh, college professors that taught me how to read and write better and were able to get me caught up with the rest of the students. But fortunately, that's how it is for the majority of people within the U.S. Now, immigration is a very real thing. It happens every single day. It will continue to happen every day, not only in America, but in other countries. Now, Chapter 2, it focused on immigration. Um, and America is founded on immigration. Otherwise, the natives would be the dominant culture, as the book talks about. All right, But when you come over, you immigrate over into the U.S., it also talked about it's, there's an importance in maintaining your ethnic identity. Um, you do want to try to get to know the culture as best you can. That way, no matter what culture you go and try to assimilate into, you can learn their ideas, their thoughts and opinions, and make it life easy for you to grow up there. Um, and expand your mind and grow yourself as a person. Okay? So you want to maintain your culture, just like the Latinos um, or the Cubans, my bad, uh, in Florida. Uh, when they moved over there, they maintained their culture, and their culture helps support them, helps grow their income, and helps uh, grow them as a people. Okay? And so they like to try to stay in their own culture. However, there is danger in that because you're not open minded. You're very closed minded um, when you talk about that kind of stuff like endogamy, just marrying um, just within your culture to maintain your culture. Okay? So you want to be open to new thoughts, different ideas, and stuff like that. All right? Um, but there will, no matter what you do, even if you accept the other culture fully, there will always be discrimination if you're a different color or skin tone. Um, than the dominant culture here, which is white people. <laughs> um, and so there will always be discrimination. Now, that could be uh, socially. It could be in making money, in education, in life in general. There would be discrimination. Uh, I've experienced it my whole life, but we won't get into that. So it also talked about in Chapter 2, the Brown versus Board of Education, China, uh, which is, you know, where blacks and whites were able to go to school equally. Separate what equal is not equal. And so that's what that talked about and trying to get blacks and whites within the same school. All right. But even if you get them within the same school, chapter three talks about social classes and there will always be social classes. So if you are of a certain ethnicity, certain race, certain culture, you're some, sometimes your people will not be, um, likely to advance as much as the dominant culture, okay? Um, just because you won't have as many opportunities as the dominant uh, culture's people will have. And um, 
that could be an education or an employment period. So uh, that's that, and that's how life is as well. So there are uh, different advantages. If you are white, you'll have a better education. Um, and it depends where you're born as well. I mean, if you're born in the ghetto and you're white, you're not going to have as many advantages as somebody born in the suburbs. But you will have advantages over the black ghetto person. It's just uh, there's differences, there's advantages. And once you're born, you're born into that social class and that social standing. And you're born with those advantages or disadvantages in life. You're born with obstacles that you'll automatically have to overcome or obstacles that you will never see in your life. You're born into that, into that role, into that place in life. Um, and there are social stratification rankings as well, which in that chapter, in chapter three, helped you, uh, help me to kind of see how they rank people, you know, based off of, um, money, power, uh, culture, that kind of thing. And they rank you, they rank, uh, Americans in general on that rank, um, or on that list, that social stratification list. So if you are poor and black and from the ghetto, most likely you will remain poor and black and in the ghetto. And you won't have the uh, opportunities that other people will have to advance themselves. Kind of how I describe that. If you look at Baltimore as a city, the people within the inner city, right, they often have dreams of moving out to the suburbs on the outskirts of Baltimore. Like, I'm going to get out of the ghetto. I'm going to bring my mom, my family with me, and we're going to move out of this place in life, right? And then the people that are on the suburbs, they have dreams about bigger and better opportunities. Maybe I can become rich, do that, and do that. Most likely what's going to happen is the people in the inner city are going to stay in the inner city. And the people on the suburbs, most of them will achieve what they want in life. Just because of the different uh, opportunities, educational opportunities, social opportunities, uh, financial opportunities that the people in the inner city just don't have. Um, that's just how it is. All right, so also it talked about educational uh, opportunities within Chapter 3, and people, uh, especially when talking about college, are going to be better off if you are from a higher social standing. So if you have more money, if you have more wealth, um, if you're white rather than black, um, you'll have more of an advantage in getting to college than that of your counterpart. Okay, so, you know, it, for me, for example, I mean, my mom did not have money to support me to go to college. I had to do all that by myself. I had to do everything by myself. I needed to, you know, I got a little bit of money as much as my mom possibly could, you know, which is, <laughs> isn't much. But I love her to death. She's amazing for helping me out. She's like the, she's like the woman who gave Jesus her penny, you know, like that, that woman is, uh, well, I don't know, she didn't give Jesus her penny, but, you know, basically she offered it up, yeah, so I guess that's giving Jesus her penny. All right, but the woman who gave her penny, you know, uh, is better than the person who gives, you know, a $1,000 that has a million, you know, something like that, you know, and that's her only penny, all right, but that's how my mom is, and I love her to death. She helped me out an immense amount, but she just wasn't able to help me as much financially. Unfortunately, a lot of people who are uh, in the same situation Okay, they just do not uh, have the money to be able to support themselves, so they have to go to community college um, and have to try to figure things out from there. So they don't have uh, these opportunities to advance in the social ladder, get higher paying jobs, get more of an education to uh, better themselves. And they don't have that ad advantage. So most of the times they have a trade or they go to community college for a few years and just get a job working something that has some medium pay. Probably a little bit better though than what their families had. But you're not going to be able to climb the rankings and jump from one class to another class within your lifetime. Most likely that's not going to happen. And that's what I talked about with my Polish family. Like slowly we've been increasing and getting better and having more opportunities and more pay. All right. So that's kind of what uh, chapter three talked about. So chapters two and chapter three were really just on cultural differences, um, social class differences, and differences that you'll receive in education um, and discrimination and all that kind of stuff. So some things that I think we can improve upon are the acceptance of people um, of different groups and cultures into our society. If you have uh, somebody who's Latino come over, right, and say they come over to a place where there's a bunch of white people or a bunch of black people, accept them into your culture, um, 
Accept them in life and don't discriminate. Don't do it. All right. Because that's not going to help you and that's not going to help them. All right. And it keeps everybody stuck in the same cycle. Another thing I would like to improve upon are equality in all things, especially education. I think it's very vital that people receive uh, the same educational opportunities as rich people. Because if they receive those same opportunities, then you'll see more people advancing. If you see more people advancing, that means that the economy will grow uh, and people will achieve what they want in life, which I think will be happier for everyone except the people who want to maintain their power and stuff. But, you know, aside from them, uh, everybody will be happier if they're able to achieve more um, and, and do more for their families that they couldn't do before. All right, some things that I would like to put in practice uh, within my classroom is allowing for opportunities for kids to um, allow others to see their perspective. So if they're from a different culture, allowing them to be able to show their perspective to these kids from other cultures. So that way... Um, if I can see the, the two different worlds and kind of get the best of both worlds, best of both of them. Another thing I would like to put in practice are teaching kids, no matter what their standing is, um, in the same way. So if they are poor, if they're rich, if they're black, if they're white, if they're Latino, if they're Asian, you know, if they're homeless, no matter what, I want to teach kids the same as the next student. So that way everybody has an equal opportunity to advance in their own life and make the best out of themselves. All right, so giving back. Um, and I guess to wrap it all up, I do have a final question. And that uh, would be, why isn't there more progress in allowing poor kids to be able to advance themselves? All right, in a lot of schools, I think that we see kids that are poor or from a different culture than our own. If you're teaching um, as different and not going to be able to achieve as much as a rich white kid in your class. So you want to focus on that kid, getting him the best possible grades. So that way, you know, you can have the highest score as a teacher, you know, and do the best on tests. I think that's bogus. I think every student should have the equal uh, opportunities to be able to advance themselves and as much attention and hope as you provide to the next student. Anyways, so that's uh, chapters two and chapters three. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm out.